be with all of you. The Bible tells us that in the end times, it will be terrible times. When we move to the end times, we know the times are getting more dangerous and darker. But every time when we talk about darkness, what kind of darkness is that? So,、um, in our human nature and understanding, we think that wars and pandemic, all these are darkness. Or we think that when morality decline, or when there's an overload of information on the internet, all this affects our values and all these things, and all these are considered as darkness. So, have you ever wondered what is the bi? What's the darkness that the Bible talk about? So some people, they just sense the darkness. So in the church circle, you also see that some pastors they always、uh, share things that are very frightening and shocking to people concerning the end times. So they say that you see the pandemic comes. So you look at certain、uh, year and month. There's this、uh, blood moon, or there are certain wars, and there's、uh, instability, and there's always earthquakes and disasters coming. So they try to use all these things to preoccupy us, so that we are concerned only about the things in front of us. So people just went chasing all this news and think that. Oh, that is considered as darkness and danger, but the Bible tells us a very clear idea about what is real darkness. So, in the book of Romans, in the beginning, it tells us that God's wrath was revealed from heaven to all who are godless and unrighteous, who suppress the truth. So, men who suppress the truth, and Paul also said that in the end days, people are always learning but never understanding the truth. So, they seems to learn many truth but they do not understand the truth. So they hear the truth here and there, but they just cannot understand. What is the sound doctrine? So whether it's sound or not sound, so they cannot discern, they cannot differentiate. So when people turn to their Bible, they are easily led astray to the teachings of the world, like psychology or groundless、um, eschatological theories. And many people, when they listen, they just believe. And so, in such a state. We see that people cannot tell their right hand and left hand apart. They cannot differentiate between darkness and light, between what comes from man and what comes from God, and therefore they cannot discern the truth. They cannot discern sound doctrine. So the young people they cannot discern. Young people they only seek fun. Middle-aged people they cannot discern because they want to look out for what are. Pragmatic. Even the elderly, they cannot discern because they keep searching for things that can comfort them. So, we can sense a very tricky problem. So, the darkest problem of this era is is when we when we say this era is very dark. We will understand that people more and more cannot discern what is true and false. And so, up to a point, people just do not care anymore. They just want what is pragmatic, what is pleasing to the ears, what is、um, fitting to my nature and can、uh, please my feelings. And so, the church message just went into pragmatism and humanism, and they mix all these things into the gospel. So we asked, 
people of this world, they are getting sh more and more shallow and they do not search for the ultimate truth and they don't care about whether there's truth. They just think that what everybody say is right and we just tolerate and accept everyone's views. And up to a point, they cannot even hold fast to biblical truth. So what is the root of this problem? So we ask, who, is the, who will pass on the truth? The God has given the truth to the church. So church should be the messenger of truth. The church is the house of truth, and the church is, the church is also established by the truth. So James tells us that God has given birth to us with the truth so that we are the first fruits of all created beings because all things have fallen and are under the wrath of God. All, everyone, everything suppress the truth of God. And through the Holy Spirit, by God's truth, God gave birth to a group of first fruits of people and so we are born again by the Holy Spirit and we believe in the truth and then we realize our lives change. Such people, they are the church. Such people, what's their chief responsibility? That is none other than, uh, it's not about doing charity or doing volunteer work or having a lot of program during Christmas, bring a lot of people to the church to just um, get, get into the Christmas mood. So people, they are not born by programs or human methods or human will, but they are born by the truth. And so their chief calling is to preach the sound doctrine, the word of God, and to live out the word of God. And so if we asked, if the church does not care about the spreading of the word and the preaching of sound doctrine, then what's the point? What's, the, what's our purpose? So if we care about other things, if we want to build a human empire or if we use human methods, then why should we establish a church? So I really want to ask many churches. Some, we always hear that there are more and more churches in the world. Back then when I visited Korea, we saw a lot of churches, a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of cross uh, along, uh, across the country. In Singapore itself, we have about 500 churches and in this small building, there's already two churches. So when people sense that there's a lot of churches, they feel very uh, high. But you must ask, what is the church? The church is the house of the truth. The, but is the church preaching the sound doctrine of God? So this is something we need to ask ourselves. The next thing we need to ask is, if God's truth is the only way to save the world, then why should we be afraid of opening the church? Have you ever pondered upon this? Why did I bring out these two points? Because recently, I received the news, especially those from China, you will know. Because the Chinese government already said that this year, March, they will implement, they will impl they will implement a new religion law to prohibit everyone from posting or spreading anything online concerning religion. So they totally forbid this. So, so do, of course, those lawbreakers will be uh, punished. So people will be fearful. So usually people at this moment, on WeChat uh, and Bible study group, they have a lot of chats online and they always share God's word through those platforms. Some people, they have been doing that every week. But such people, they start to uh, withdraw from the chats. And so a lot of believers, they are very perplexed and they ask, uh, what should we do? And ask pastor to give them some direction. So my answer is very simple. What I want to ask is, if have you ever asked, what is your first motive of setting up such a chat group now there's pandemic, in these two years, we also see that many churches have closed. Of course, uh, 
In China, they are also、um, commanded to. They are also ordered to shut the church. In such situation, the church, some church, still remain open. So why is it that under such oppression, churches are still open? Some churches, they are, they clearly know that the message they are preaching is a message that will save people and that is biblical. So no matter how hard it is, the church remains open. But also at this moment, some churches, those churches who are used to、uh, running programs and、uh, raising the church numbers, and their teachings has always been mixed with the worldly teaching, like worldly psychology and so on. Such when such oppression comes, those churches like this they were shut because those. Churches, they have no courage to take risks for the sake of the word, and so they will leave because they are just building their own empire on earth, and those human empire would not last. And at this moment of oppression, they will not be strengthened. But those who are clearly aware of why we need to build the church, the church is the house of truth. The house of church is supposed to, the. The church is meant to save souls, and such that even oppression becomes like a fire to refine their heart. Such that, in moment of crisis, they will all the more be bold and be led by the Holy Spirit, and they know what to do. Sometimes, when certain difficulty come upon us, the first thing we think of is strategies and solutions. But many a times, why is it that we didn't get the guidance of the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> That's because we lose the core focus of our thinking. So the main thing is humans have lost the truth, and the world has distorted the truth. Nobody talks about the truth. When you go to university, all you receive is the worldly knowledge. So some people they see the crisis, and they understood that if the church does not、uh, teach God's doctrine properly, if you anyhow talk about grace, love. But, but they didn't clearly tell people what is God, who is God, what is God's attribute. Even when they describe sin, they describe it like a mistake. <coughs> but they didn't bring out how humans defy God in our morality. And when that happened, people just get from bad to worse. They do not like to listen and read the Bible, and they just draw Bible texts out of context. <coughs> And so some people they cannot take such lies. Even their children they went online and they only take in all the lies. But so you must know why the church is being set up. Why must the pulpit of the church be protected? And why during such pandemic even the church must be open? And such people who knows who know this, they know that Holy Spirit will give us the strategies. The Holy Spirit will guide us, but the truth is what the Holy Spirit commands us that we must preach, because the Holy Spirit comes to reveal the truth of God. Because this, He is a Spirit of truth. So when trials come, you must all the more be clear about what is secondary and what is primary. So in the whole running of the church, in my faith journey, what is fundamental that you should hold on to? And when you understand this, in fiery trials you'll be strengthened. So this is what I want to mention. So now I've given the answer to Chinese believer, a believer of China. Now for Singapore, we don't have such problem, but we are a, for us in Singapore, we are living in the city, in a democratic society. So if you ask the common believers. You ask them what is the most important in terms in、uh, Christian faith. Their answer will be relationship is most important. What kind of relationship? What kind of relationship? Our relationship with God and man. They will often say this. We need peace, and peace and relationship are the most important. Is that right? It's also not wrong. Indeed, our relationship with God is important. But have you ever asked? What is the determining factor of that relationship between you and God? You address Him as God. What kind of God is He? What are His attributes? What kind of person you are before God? 
These are all related to sound doctrine. If you are not clear about this, then you just imagine this God yourself. You have your own needs, or based on your culture, your Western culture, then you uh, accustom Him to be like a Western or、uh, Eastern God. Then, if that's the way you have deviated, and your Christian faith cannot pass on to the next generation, so now there's a greatest crisis and darkness. It's not the external phenomenon or external dangers that、uh, make people scared. Those things will sooner or later come. Because the man of lawlessness, because of the sin of the world, but in fact, what is man's real sin? They have,、uh, they are unrighteous, and they have suppressed the truth of God. They distorted the teaching of the Bible. When they teach the Bible, it's not based on sound doctrine, but they teach based on their own preference. So a lot of deviation will come about. So, without being clear about God's truth, you must not dream of having peace. Now, two person they have good relationship, whether it's husband and wife. Now, if you have good relationship but there's no truth in between, how can you withstand the sinful nature of each other? Now, if with the truth, although you still have the sinful nature, but you will know that both of us are sinners, so you will not demand too much. And although two person. They love each other a lot, and they have harmonious relationship. But they were not based on this harmonious relationship. But both of them will love the Lord and rely on the Lord. When they look at things, they try to find harmony from the viewpoint of God. And so, there's a lot of relational healing that will come. So, without the truth, and you talk about peace and relationship and respect. It will be pointless because all this won't last. Because you have to be respected, I have to be respected. You have your emphasis, I have my emphasis. So eventually, both of us we need to give and take. Now, who will give and who will take? So if it's not grounded on the truth, it doesn't work. So today's、uh, theme. In fact, I've prepared till morning and still preparing. So this year's theme for the whole year. Is restoring and holding fast to sound doctrine. So restoring to sound doctrine and holding fast, holding fast to sound doctrine. The right. So sound doctrine, sound teaching, sound word, sound doctrine. So when we read the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, there is a doctrine. So it's not out out of context. It's not just one verse. So when you talk about sin, when you talk about God, when you talk about the world, it's not just based on one verse. Based on your own meaning, you selectively just、uh, take out a verse. If you do that, it's very easy for you to go the deviated way. So whichever church you come from, if the church never teach you carefully what is the truth. What is sound doctrine? Every time you come, you just stir your heart to get you high. Or they have a lot. Of, they run a lot of programs, deli- healing and deliverance, and speaking in tongues. And and they they didn't teach you how to understand God's word in a rooted way, in a systematic way, in a holistic way. So we need to restore to the sound doctrine. So we cannot remain. In a religion that's mixed with human ideas, so if you have heard many years,、uh, if you have caught God's, if you have heard God's truth for many years and you realize you have no power, that means you are not holding fast to the truth, because when, when situation, change, when situation changes, you are just tossed about by the wind, and so on, and the waves, and so that's why you have no fixed perspective, and that's why you feel sorry toward God. I mean, God also know we are weak, but the truth already told us how to deal with our weakness, how to bring our weakness before God, how do we cast our anxiety to God? So, this is the problem of you unable to be steadfast in holding on to God's truth. 
you are not steadfast, and so when you meet certain, when you encounter certain circumstances, then you just compromise. So today, let's、uh, read God's word carefully. So this is the first、uh, lesson. We still have、um, four more messages on this topic. So first, let's look at the book of John. So John chapter one, it says that. In the beginning was the word, and the word and the word was with God, and the word was God, and He was with God in the beginning. So, right in the beginning, the book,、uh, the apostle John used the word, used the term, used the name word to describe the Son of God. So, this word was there in the beginning, and this word was with God in the beginning. So, in other word, the Son of God. Is of、uh, is a different person from Father God, but but this word he is different from God, but he is also God. So he so the word was with God in the beginning, and we know that this word refers to Jesus, the incarnate. And John then said, "Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So the world is dark. So when we talk, when we say that the world is dark, it refers also to human hearts are dark." We are born with a deceitful heart that dislike truth. So the light shines in darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So when we look at Genesis, we see that when Bible first introduced God, before God created the whole universe, what did the Bible say? The Bible mentioned. That in the beginning, the earth was formless and empty and dark. And then the word appeared. God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. So through this word, the empty had purpose. And then, what was formless now has certain order, and the darkness now has light. So the Bible clearly tell us how everything is being created. The Bible didn't tell us that everything comes, and、uh, the Bible didn't tell us that、uh, everything comes from a search of power or energy. We we must know that power lies in the word. Everything is not created by power, but everything is created by the word of God. Everything is not created by love. You know, God is love. So in love, God created all these things. Of course, that is also God's in God's intention. But when we talk about the theology of creation, everything is created by God's word. So now, what we see, because of the word, everything was created. Everything was running. Everything was being sustained. Today, why the sun rose, and later it was said, why, why was that? Why was there rain? Because of the word of God, and in this word of God, power operates, and and love and purpose are, are all revealed, and the harmony of everything is always also revealed through the word, and this word is also the one who gives life to people. And make people born again, and shines into the darkness of people's life, so that in darkness people can see light, see hope, see inter- see eternity. So today, churches are not clear about the word, and they always talk about phenomenal stuff. There is some power being manifested. There's some、uh, feeling that the Holy Spirit has come. When you talk too much about those things. People lost a sense of seeking the truth and the word of God. 
So where is God's work? How can we、uh, know God through His word? And we gradually lose such a nature. We just want to ask something and、uh, immediately see、uh, some sensational or phen- phenomena happen. Or、uh, we pray and we feel very warm in our heart. We pray and we see miracles and wonders and we get high, but it's all a deception. Actually, God is already with us, but we refuse to know Him by His word. But we suppress the truth. We op- we oppose and we go against the truth. So right in the beginning, John told us that. John introduced the word, the word which became flesh. So, if you do not know the word, that means you do not know Jesus. Some people they go to church. They say, "I don't want no sound doctrine. I just want to know Jesus." You must be careful when you hear this, because it sounds right. Because the main character of the Bible is Jesus. But who is Jesus? Is Jesus someone you imagine? Everybody have different definition of Jesus when they think about him. Some people say Jesus came to do this for me or do that for me. So when you try to understand this Christian faith, you get into human religion. So we must restore and go back to the Bible, and use God's word, and we must see how the word introduced our Lord to to us. And must we must know all the attributes of our Lord Jesus, and then the way we know God and God's love will be different from human love. Now, human love is biased and swirly. When we talk about wisdom, it's not just about the positive psychology and worldly philosophy. And we think, wow,、well, if we mix. Bible with all these worldly teaching, then it sounds great. No, we must understand things in heaven because things in heaven are different from things on earth. You need to listen. When you talk about power, it's not phenomenal kind of power. In fact, things that you cannot see has greater power. So the God who can save men from hell and bring them to heaven, and then all the heavenly angels they rejoice. Can you see that? Now, three last week, three sisters they got baptized. Which of you can see angels rejoicing? We cannot see it, but the Bible tells us it is so. But when you can believe it, then you can feel it. Because when you believe it in that glorious occasion, you see the joy and rejoicing of God and all angels. But without believing, without faith, you cannot sense the power. So in our fallen nature, we have been exploring things, pursuing things, holding on to this and that, and feeling this and that. So we are all being deceived. In, in this world, there's this ruler of the air, and the father of lies. He's controlling the world, controlling the politics, the economy, the society trends in the world. And so, in the、uh, true and fake words of humans. So if we do not know the Word of the Bible correctly, then we will have a lot of、um, shortfall. So people of the world they cannot discern between left and right. So when internet news comes, how do you discern which is fake news? Because if you do not have the truth in your heart, it's very hard for you to discern. Some reports you need not be so worried, but if you dwell on it every day, you get worried. So pandemic numbers, how many are infected? You just look at the the report,、um, roughly, and you know the core belief in your heart, and you still come to church, even if you are even if you are infected. For a while, you just thank God for giving you the immunity, but some people they are so afraid, and they seems to lose their sense. All this is because you are without the truth. Because when you are without the truth, everything will frighten you. The powers of the world will scare you. Now, if your child didn't score well in the exam, you will worry about their future, and all these things will manipulate you. That's because you do not have truth in your heart, or you are just half aware of God's truth. So, such people they come to church. They don't care about sound doctrine. They say they just want to know Jesus. It sounds right, but you you must not be deceived by them. This is anti Bible, because. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am." 
If you go against the truth, if you reject the truth, is as good as rejecting me. So he told the Pharisees, "Why are you rejecting me? That is because you reject Father God." Then the Jews said, "I'm Ab- Abraham is our father." But Jesus told them, "Who says so? Your father is Satan, the father of lies." So those who do not know God, they love the world, they love the flesh, they pursue the world, and you look at their lives. For the whole life, they live in lies. What they think, what they feel, their emotions, their decisions, whatever they do, are all manipulated by uh, the thoughts of lies. So God wants to save you, and so we need to restore the church pulpit, reform the church pulpit. And after hearing the word of God, the altar in your heart need to be reformed. You cannot pray; it's because you 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 do not have the truth, and what you think is contrary to what God thinks. Every good and perfect gift comes from God, but what you think is you are afraid of this, you are worried about that, or you are greedy over this. God has already given you, but you are yet you are still greedy. So some believers, they wasted a lot of emotions in their life. So when you know this, what would you do? You will know that God is using the truth. To give birth to us, and all the calling of Christians is to preach the truth, and move and live for the sake of the truth. The wisdom you you have will come from the truth you hear. Now today, many people in the church they receive calling for certain ministries. So some people they say, we have the burden for young people. Some people say, I'm very passionate. For church music, some people say I'm burdened to do visitations. So some people say I'm called to do young people ministry. So what kind of ministry is that? You, if you motivate them to excel, even the teachers and the counselor of the world, they will do the same. So all these things. So. If what you know is the same as the world, then what's the point of you doing youth ministry? If you only know how to motivate the young, like the world, but you must teach the young to understand, like Samuel, that since young they they knew the truth of God, so that since young they can hear the voice of God. Even church music is not to compose some music to make people happy. No, church music is set apart music, sacred music. So even the melody, the lyrics are all different because when you compose the song, when you sing the song, you are singing out your doctrine. So in the hymns, through the music created by God, even through even while singing, you yourself is encouraged, and people can once again reaffirm what they believe. So that is church music. So in doing all ministries. If we are not centered on the truth, we will lose our direction. As you keep doing,、uh, you are just doing it for your self worth. Oh, this group of ch- children, I teach them well, and so when they grow up,、uh, they are also grateful toward me, and I also like them. But eventually, you ask, what is your relationship with them? A lot of people、uh, may sing the song you composed. And many people may be grateful for your concern, but eventually you ask, how much can you show them concern? You visit them, but eventually you realize that they depend on you, but they are not depending on the Lord because they do not have the truth in their heart. So, for them, it's important for them to know what to think when they have marital problem, when they have depression, and if they do not know. They will just depend on men, and as they continue to depend on men, eventually, the their faith will fail. Of course, I know God is love, and we are meeting and helping each other in love. But but this love must come from the truth. So without the right truth and the right word, to cleanse our hearts, to. Illuminate our hearts to strengthen the hearts. Then we have no way. Then what we are doing are only at the human level. 
So this year I have this burden in this area. So we must know this era. Some people, I see that their children are still young. In the year end sharing, I mentioned that uh, we will commit the Sunday school ministry to Sister Adrian. So my youngest child, this is his uh, last week he's attending Sunday school. Next week onward, he will join the adult service. So 16 years old, no matter what level of education you are, when you reach 16 years old, you already have your senses, you will join the adult service. So my children is already over the Sunday school stage. So I look at the Sunday school camp. So the whole night we were discussing how cute the children are at the children camp. Now this primary five, this primary three. So we just say that oh no, our children grow up too fast. Now we should have more children. But now too late to talk about all these things. So those primary one, primary two, they are very cute. So they are young mice. You need to think what will well what will what will occupy their, their young mind? So we need to think about how to nurture these young children and think about what to put into their minds and their hearts. We are not go Sunday school is not to be there to be babysitter and nannies. Our Sunday school teachers need to digest the Sunday school material to read the confirm and then teach properly. Now we give a lot of freedom to our brethren in doing ministries. But the only thing we look at is if the Sunday school teacher or the cell group leader didn't prepare their message properly, it will make me unhappy. Because you waste people's time. That person came to church. Out of seven days, only one day they get to hear the word of God. And the rest of the week they spend with the world. If you didn't give them the truth of heaven, then what do you give them? You just make them play. Of course, they need to play, but you need to tell them who is God, who is Jesus, who am I, what is my sin, what is the world. Do you know? At least you need to know, you need to let the child know from at least primary school all these things. So you teach people to, you teach the children to believe uh, God. It's not just teaching them Noah's Ark and pray because they need to know what to pray. And then you just see them, uh, you know, grow up to be monsters. Because of this sinful nature, they have this potential to become monster, to become a beast. So 16, 17 years old, you know, last time they used to listen to me so well. Now I just say one word and then they retaliate 10 sentences because there's no truth in him. You tell him, now it's too late, you cannot go out. Then he say, who says so? All my friends went out. Is that the truth? Because there's no truth in his heart. We thought our struggle with our children are just very common conflicts. But that's because, that's because there's no truth. In your family, there is no authority based on the word of God. Because what God says, even parents have to listen. Without this, when you just read the Bible, you just read one verse to make yourself feel good. But what is this word trying to talk to you? So, when the child grows to 15 to 16 years old, they start to uh, retaliate, you know, who says so? Who says so that I must go to st I must go to school? Now I'm very capable. I can go out to earn income. Then you start to regret. Then you start to realize why is he acting according to how he's pleased? And how come he's not listening to you? Because you are also human. 
so he will start to feel, you know, that you are already obsolete. You do not understand my generation. So your child will see you as an outdated person, and so nothing and no one can restrain him because he didn't know who is God and His truth. I need to say this properly because as I prepare this message after the TBR conference, I keep thinking, what's the direction for this year? So we need, all of us need to build up our knowledge of the truth. Some things I will elaborate in the next uh, section, in the next uh, sermon. Now let's look at uh, Romans chapter one. What is uh, the root problem of men? Verse eighteen: The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Now. So here we talk about suppressing the truth. So how are we suppressing God's truth? Actually, God's truth is everywhere. Look at verse nineteen. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. Now, when you look at the Judge and justice system of the world, you will realize that there's justice on earth. That's because there's a just God in heaven. So, do not just be afraid of the court of justice, but not be afraid of God. This world, there are people who love you, your family, your friends. So you must know that there is a God who loved the world. So He restrained Himself, such that the world is not destroyed yet. So from creation, you can see. The Creator, and this is revealed to human heart. But the Prince of the world resists and opposes this because the Prince of the world only had lies. So when the Prince of the world control human life, the most obvious thing is not to make men go and be murderers and adulterers, but he will cause men to suppress the truth in his conscience, conscience. So men may have this awareness of the Creator God. So the devil make you suppress this truth. Look at science. How can there be God when you're born? You only see your parents. You won't see God. Even if there is God, He has no relationship with you. So you don't have to care about God. So all this teaching, and he tried to use the world's science and beauty. And the fun of the world, the enjoyment of the world, to satisfy your flesh. I mean, of course, this flesh needs to be satisfied. We eat, we drink, we get married, and we be happy. But when you are satisfied by the flesh, look at verse twenty-one. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So human sin is. When they suppress the truth, they suppress the existence of of God, and they suppress what God said. And then on earth, when they leave, life is good. Some people people love him. There are parents who love him. There are money to spend. There are friends, but their sin is what they never give thanks to God because of all these things. But they thank. Their teacher, they thank their parents, they thank their benefactors, they thank the government. But who give you the government? Who give you teacher? Who give you all these things? They never think about it. So those who suppress the truth, eventually they will not give God the glory. They will not thank God. And how does this world live? They live by human idea and what they can see. They depend on the world's psychology. And so on, and then they boast about their human greatness. You see, I'm a great doctor. How good are my、um, medical skills? And I've cured so many people. But this human hand. Now, if God didn't protect this this、uh, hand, it would be useless. Because then you start to tremble and you cannot do operation, perform operation anymore. But when men didn't give thanks to God, but in their heart they know about God because when they created, when they are created by God, they feel that any people are not like animals, just happy to eat. 
and just happy to have money because when man is being created, man is being created in the image of God. So there is a God who created man by His image. God is more and more powerful than humans and is in control of everything. So humans are also aware that He is limited. So He's a bit afraid. So if you continue to read Romans, humans will start to create human religions. So they exchange the image of God into uh, creatures like birds, reptiles, and so on, animals. So this is the state of mankind. The Bible clearly tells us this. So they suppress the truth. So if you do not know the truth, you do not know Jesus. If you, if, if you do not know the Word of God, you do not know the Word which became flesh. And what you know is created by yourself and imagined by yourself. So we need to go back to the truth. So in this era, there are three serious problems of suppressing the truth. First, people do not care about the true doctrine. I'm talking about people in the church. You look at some people, They, are not, they do not care about what is true or false. They care only about what is pragmatic. So they go to church. They like the church to talk about positive psychology, about social gospel, because it's very pragmatic. They like the church to talk about marriage counseling, because they only like things that are pragmatic. And so one day a pastor preach, preaches, uh, if you have illness, you uh, take the Holy Communion at home. It sounds weird. but they can accept it because they want their illness to get cured because the pastor told them if you take Holy Communion, uh, your illness will get cured. Now when we talk about oil, so some people say you bring a bottle of oil and always pour some oil on your head to make your hair very oily and then all your hair are gone. Some people, they always uh, dip some oil on their head Some people, are very, uh, some people are very scared of him and say, you don't give me more oil on my head. They do not know what is true anointing. God, is, God anoint us by the Holy Spirit and by the Word to strengthen our heart, to give us courage and wisdom. So they do not understand that. They only use phenomenal things. And they try to connect all these phenomenal things, physical things, outward things with spiritual things. But why people accept it? Because it's pragmatic. Because it brings me benefit. But they do not really want to surrender to the sovereignty of God's word. They just, they just want what is pragmatic. So such a people, they don't care about what is true or false. And they cannot discern what is true and false. They just accept anything that's pleasing to their ears. So the Bible tells us that Such people, they actually detest the truth. They only find teachers who can preach things that are pleasing to their ears and they can even give them an absurd teaching. They just proclaim blessing on that person anyhow. But they themselves know that they are not submitting to God. Then, but yet they are not embarrassed or shy to receive those proclaimed blessings. So in the Bible, they skip They skip over those passages that tells them to obey God, to carry the cross. So they cannot discern what is true and false doctrine. Such a person, when they are hit by certain suffering, they will uh, then come to our church and listen to the word. Then they will start to say Amen and, and agree. But they are not knowing what they are agreeing to. They want to Amen and give themselves a very godly feel. And they just want their problem to go away. Because, and after their problem goes away, they no longer come to church. Because all they care about is pragmatism. Such people, they are in the church. I cannot stop when I talk about this. Another thing. So first, this person do not care about true or false doctrine. So they don't even have the heart to care. 
and second type of people. So they care about they care about what is true and false doctrine. They are willing to know what is true and what is false, but yet they cannot differentiate. <coughs> So no matter how they try to listen, they struggle a lot to understand. And they, after hearing this, they got headache. Why? Many reasons. The Bible tells us that some people they seems to learn always. Uh, they attend this conference, that conference. They visited the traditional church, the charismatic church, because they want to search for the truth. But they cannot differentiate. The true and false doctrines, because he has a lot of selfish desires within him. What I want versus what God wants. There's oh, there's always a tension. So I come. I just want my child to be well and successful. But pastor also say my child should love God. Also, also can. So I want both. But God say only choose one. I cannot choose anything. So they have their selfish desire. Or Perhaps this person have received a lot of wrong teachings from another church, and those wrong teachings has been entrenched in him, so he's used to that. He cannot change, so he cannot differentiate. The old way of the written code and the new way of the spirit, external ritualistic things versus things of the life. Some people they come to church. They say the message of our church is a bit different. No, they go baptism by immersion. We are baptism by sprinkling. But some people they hear and they understood that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is most important than the outward water baptism. Some people they just cannot let go of certain things. They hold on to the rituals rigidly. So they base a lot on outward rituals. Sometimes it's not because I want to judge or criticize people. Some things we need to use the truth to explain, and we use the power of the Holy Spirit to explain the full word and gospel. And yet they still cannot understand because they have certain issues. Some people they have gone to temples, and they go to temple. And you just tell the temple God what you want, and now you come to church. You you are no longer telling God what you want, but you try to learn about what God wants. So selfish desires or some entrenched religious things are within your, a person's life. So such a person, he need to go through the process of、um, tearing down totally and building up again. So the word of God is inspired by God. To correct, to rebuild, to admonish people, and to teach people do good, so that people of God can do all kinds of good work. If you come to church, you like to do good works, but if you do not want to be rebuilt, corrected, and admonished, you only want to do things in church, then you just end up wounded and feeling very dry because you have not yet torn down your life. To rebuild again, so first type they don't care about what is true or false. Second, they want to differentiate the true and the false, but they cannot differentiate. And then third, third kind, they are able to differentiate. They can know God's、um, full gospel. They always hear the word of God, but they cannot hold on to the truth. So it's a pity for such a person. Such a person is like Lot. Lot lived in a sinful city, and he was tormented there, sitting at the city gate. Even his own child becomes like homosexual. So he is a Christian, but he has no power to influence people beside him. So the word that he knows. Cannot strengthen his will, because Hebrews tell us that there's a lot of burdens oppressing him, and there's a lot of sin that entangle him, and he cannot shake them off. So he cannot run his the race set before him easily. 
So when he, he look in front, he will look back again. Just like Lot. So in his life, there's a lot of dis discipline. There's a lot of groaning. But in the Bible, there's this character like Lot. Do not keep thinking you are Lot, because the Bible also had Jacob. Jacob was living in the world, and then suddenly he got disciplined. His daughter got raped. His own his own sons murdered. The whole city of men men. And then they they are facing the threat of life and death, so Jacob then said, "Let us get up and go back to Bethel." And then Jacob told his children, "Take out all your idols that you have been wearing on your necks and on your ears." So because their children love the culture there, and they start to embrace their idols. So these are the state of weak Christians. You know, they see how their family members are loving the world. They didn't utter a word because they say it's very hard to say. You keep enduring them till it's very serious. Then you realize if I do not say anything or do anything, then my family will be doomed. And then you start to act on it. So sometimes we also go through the process of Jacob. Then you know that in fact. I, I, you know, sometimes we just want our family to be peaceful, in harmony, and joyful. Nothing wrong about that. People love all these things, but you must have the truth, because without the truth, as you lead your marital life and raise your children, eventually, you may all all may be well, but they eventually they just take the path of the world, and it becomes our pity. So among believers, many of us are like Lot. Or Jacob, Lot had a sorry end, but Jacob was awakened, and eventually, he saw his beloved son Joseph, and he blessed Pharaoh. And so we see God's mercy on uh, Jacob. So do not say that I'm already sixty years old; my children are all grown up. The words of the Bible is a warning, but also a hope. But the core focus is the same: is that we need to go back to the Word of God. These are the three crises for us to think through. May we truly come before God and get out of all these crises. And so, in the dangerous time, God urges us to hold fast and restore, to restore and hold fast to sound doctrine. Paul told Timothy that you must watch your lives and your doctrine. So doctrine, which is also teaching, meaning to say, what you know inside you, what you believe, versus how you live it out. This must, these two must match. Christian faith is about the whole person. Not you just hold certain things in your knowledge,、uh, and just apply that knowledge you during Bible classes, and then you live、uh, your daily life on, by your own power. So that's not the way it should be. Like Lord, Lord is very distressed. Some things may sound very pragmatic, but five years, ten years later, you realize you will regret because of certain consequences. So, pulpit message will pull us back every week. So, this world. Now I have already resolved before God that I only have one life to live. I want to commit my life to what is real. I don't want to commit. I don't want to commit my life to what is false. Jesus is the incarnate truth. So he is the truth. He came to the world. He preached the truth, and he lived out the truth to show us. And he said that the world does not know him. And he told the Pharisees that your father is the devil, the father of lie, lies. So, we need to know that on Earth there is this battle between what is true and false. This is there is a battle between the truth and lies, and the battle will continue up to the day where the Judge of the Living and the Dead appears. So on Earth, 
if Christian says, I do, do not want to have battle, I just want to have harmony and joy, you can be in peace and joy with people, but in matters of the truth, when you, when you want to preach the gospel, when you want to hold fast to the truth, there will, there will surely be battles. Because without that battles, it shows that you are just compromising. Because you are living in a dark world full of lies. So if you already see that the world is full of lies, full of things that are not glorifying God and not giving thanks to God, and this world is under the rule of the prince of the world, and because human hearts, we have a lot of lies and we are self-centered and we live for ourselves, then we will be deceived. So from my perspective, your perspective, that's why nations go against nation, um, family against family, and then within the family, also husband and wife, they struggle, parents and child also, because everybody give in to themselves. And in such a state, God says, you must be caught for what? For your whole life, in order to, if for your whole life, you need to hold fast to the sound doctrine and preach this doctrine and use this word to build your family and the, your whole life. You need to live for what is real. You live for the truth. You must live for the reality and not live for something that will vanish five years later. So some people, they commit their whole life for their on some people they commit their whole life to their child but after their child grow up they have their own life to live now God tells us to love our child but God didn't tell us to treat our child as our idol in order to raise your child you need to pray for other children you may have certain problem in your marriage but because of your this marriage you must pray for other people with marital issues so you realize the goal of your life appears. Before the world was created, everything is formless, empty and dark, without purpose. But now, when the word became flesh, there are order, there, there is light and there is purpose. That's how we understand the word of God. So from lies, from self-pity, regrets, all these are no longer needed because all these are related to the lies. But today, if you understand the truth, today you can follow the Lord. And we thank God for that. Now, the Christian life is not um, merely being born again by the truth. Now, before Jesus goes, before Jesus went up to the cross, Jesus prayed for them that, Father, they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Please sanctify them with your truth. And your word is your truth. So those of us who come from the evangelicals, especially those who hold on to Armenians, Armenianism, they keep telling you, you need to be very zealous, you need to do, you must have strong will. It's all about you, about humans, humans, humans. So up to a point, you feel like sanctification is also dependent on your own will and determination. But your will and determination is very little. Now, which of you can use your determination to beat the devil? Sometimes your will does not even enable you to wake up this morning. So humans, we are so weak. Bears and lions are stronger than us. If they want to eat, they just charge. So sometimes we find it a dread, a drag to come to church. So the minds that hum, uh, the, the human minds that God created, you need to sanctify this. You need to when you want to follow God, you must first be an illuminated. You must first be illuminated by the truth. You must first come up from the lie. Then when you're awakened, then your will can be strong. So Saturday night, after service. Uh, we are. Uh, we went home late, and then morning we always very tired. You know, I sl I slept less than five hours. So my wife will always say, "You look very different before and after you went on stage." So you need to have the purpose of living. When you pray, the spirit of truth will convict you. Why should you be preaching this message today? Who is the one who strengthens you to preach this sermon? So co-workers always tell me. 
No, before before you preach, and in the beginning you are very soft. It's like you haven't wake up. But when the word come to the mouth, to the mind, to the heart, then you no, know, I strength. I got the strength to preach. After preaching, I also lose the strength after that. Lose the physical strength after that. So, for us to be sanctified, we need the truth, the word of God. You must not escape for things that you cannot understand. You will not have the will to move on. But if you know something clearly, even if you die, you will also do it. Even if it's heavy downpour, you will still come to church. For example, the Lord Jesus said, "We do not belong to the world. The world is full of lies." If you are to stand firm in the world and testify for God, and if you want to have a strong will, but eventually you must go through the truth to sanctify yourself. Then you put off the old self and put on the new self. May the Lord bless all of you. Let me just share one thing. We must not keep thinking. That you know you are not a believer for very long, so it's very hard for you to、um, grasp the truth. Yesterday during our forum, a brother was baptized for less than a year, and he said something important. He said, "He said, Pastor, I used to be Taoist when." And when I was a Taoist, I only tell my God what I want, and I ask from Him. But now I come to Christianity. One of my greatest turning point is I need to. I no longer must be concerned about what I want, but what God wants, and so I ask for that. So my lesson is to know what God wants. So how can I? So how can I know what God wants? Because I know what I want. So for 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 me to know what God wants, I need to read the Word of God. So, so yesterday we discussed whether there's a need for reform teaching, especially after the TBR conference. So this brother was baptized for less than a year, but he was baptized in a very normal way, not abnormal way, because it's very clear. He knows what is sin, what is Christ, and now he just want to go back to the Word of God. So when he said that, and I said, "Who says spiritual infant cannot do it?" Problem is, sometimes we are not taught by the right teachings, and then what we learn is not so normal. So, my dear brethren, this brother, when he said this, I said, "Yes, indeed, our theme for this year is we need to go back to the truth and hold on, hold fast to the truth." So let's pray. Lord, we we thank you for using your word to encourage us. Lord, where your servant is limited, may the Holy Spirit speak to everyone's heart, so that we see that God has given the Holy, given Holy Spirit and truth to the church. Now, the Holy Spirit and the truth cannot be separated. Lord, the Holy Spirit's work, the Holy Spirit comes to reveal your truth. So in the beginning of the new year, Lord, help us to be clear and steadfast in the direction ahead for this year. Lord, if you will, please continue to build up this church in terms of our foundation in sound teaching. Lord, we thank you and we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.